Nexus tablets have never really blown us away, but they've always been one of the best options on the market, especially for the money. This year Google has partnered with HTC to bring us the Nexus 9. The 8.9 inch tablet brings a more premium build and with that a more premium price tag. Is it worth picking up? I'm Ben with iTech Triad and let's find out in our video review of the Nexus 9. First, let's talk about the hardware. The Nexus 9 is rocking a design that we're pretty familiar with, similar to what we saw on last year's Nexus 5, and also similar to last year's Nexus 7. But since this is an HTC-made tablet we're talking about, of course, we've got some metal to work with around the side, along with dual front-facing stereo speakers. The build is, well, good. I think Google and HTC definitely could have done better to hit their target of bringing a premium build to a Nexus tablet, but they definitely did a, mu a lot better than previous Nexus tablets. Sure, it's still plastic on the back, but that's not really a bad thing. The tablet still feels pretty solid and the metal trim is a nice, ch nice touch. My only real complaint with the hardware are the buttons which couldn't possibly be less tactile. Now moving on from that for a minute, I know everyone kind of freaked out about it at the beginning with the initial reviews of the Nexus 9, and that is the back flexing. Now really, you don't need to worry about this problem. It was a lot worse at the beginning, that is definitely true, but once retail units started coming out, the problem was pretty much solved. There's no flexing really worth worrying about on the Nexus 9. Sure, the back has a little bit of play in the center, but you're not really going to notice it in real life use. It's only if you're actually looking for it that you'll actually notice it. Now talking about hardware is great and all, but that's not really the point of a Nexus, and it never has been. Every Nexus, including the current models, has been designed from the ground up to be a showcase for the latest and greatest software that Google has to offer. The Nexus 9 was the first device to ship with Android 5.0 Lollipop out of the box, and it really is an impressive operating system. Material design shines on the nice display found on the Nexus 9, and everything runs pretty smooth thanks to the 64-bit NVIDIA K1 processor inside. The software performs well, allows you to get a lot done, and is just a pleasure to use. Lollipop is too big an update to talk about in this video, but I'll condense it down into just one sentence. It's the biggest and most beautiful update to Android since 4.0 Ice Cream Sandwich when it was launched all the way back in 2011. Everything feels so much more refined and it really feels like things just can't get much better than this. Now getting back to what we can see and feel, let's talk about the display. The Nexus 9 has an 8.9 inch IPS panel up front which is pretty great. Viewing angles are good and the size feels nice in the hand. It's just small enough to make the tablet portable, but just big enough to enjoy your movies, games, and actually get some work done if need be. It's definitely got some noticeable light bleed issues, but nothing that's too annoying during regular use. It's also worth noting that the display is not the standard 16 by 9 or 16 by 10 aspect ratio which we're used to on Android tablets but instead a 4x3 aspect ratio that we're really only used to seeing on the iPad. While this is great for books and internet browsing, I found myself not really enjoying it as much when I was playing games or watching movies. Now when you're talking about the display or anything else about a tablet, it can be as amazing as it wants to be, but that doesn't do you any good if it doesn't last all that long. Fortunately, the Nexus 9 will last quite a while doing unintensive tasks getting around 4-6 to six hours of screen on time per charge. On average, I would get about 5 hours on screen time over the course of about 2 days before I needed to plug it back in. This makes sense with the 6700mAh battery inside, but it also gives me something to gripe about. The Nexus 9's hardware feels great, but it's shockingly heavy the first time you pick it up. It feels much heavier than it should, but since all that extra weight is going into a bigger battery, it's something I'm willing to overlook. The speakers found up front are one of the biggest highlights for me when it comes to the Nexus 9. Since HTC built it, we've got two front-facing stereo boom sound speakers on the front which are some of the best out there on a tablet. Sound is loud, rich, and just overall great for playing games, watching movies, or listening to music. Just to spend them with you. 
Something worth noting though is that these speakers, since they are completely open, tend to collect a lot of dust, which, depending on how you look at it, can be a little annoying. Since the device is already a pretty big fingerprint magnet, it can be a little bit annoying to get dust stuck in it, so if you're low OCD, this may not be the tablet for you. So is the Nexus 9 worth it? The short answer, not really. With a base model coming in at only 16GB of non-expandable storage, and with as many issues as the Nexus 9 does have, this is certainly not worth $399. It gets worse when you look at extra storage maxing out at only 32GB and charging the $80 premium just for that extra memory. And let's not even get started on the LTE model which comes in at $600. The price tag is really what's pushing me away from the Nexus 9. While it's a great tablet for the Android junkie or the Nexus warrior among us, the average consumer who wants the best bang for their buck just will not be getting it with the Nexus 9. Now if you're buying a Nexus 9, it's for the software, not for any other reason. Well, there is one other one, but I don't say it best. If you gotta have a Nexus, you gotta have a Nexus. So that's gonna go ahead and do it for this review of the Nexus 9. Go ahead and check out our full written review, which is linked down below, for more information about the Nexus 9, including where you can buy it. While you're down there, go ahead and make sure you're subscribed to our channel for more tech videos just like this one in the near future. If you have any questions about the Nexus 9, be sure to leave a comment down below, and as always, thanks for watching.